Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's presentation brought to you by Parlance and our partner, StarTel. Parlance and StarTel work together to deliver best in class call automation, unified communications, agent productivity, and analytics visibility to healthcare contact centers. Today's discussion is focusing on the technology challenges impacting healthcare contact centers which can either be inhibitors to a better patient journey or solutions to a better patient journey. My name is Mark Bedard with Parlance, and I'm joined today by Rachel Sauerbray of StarTel Corp. Mm -hmm. Rachel, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Mark. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Great. Just to quickly run through our agenda, uh, Rachel and I are going to present some of the challenges facing Healthcare call contact centers today, broken that down into two different sections. Uh, from the parlance perspective, we'll be discussing some of the call automation challenges, uh, while Rachel will help us understand some of the agent productivity challenges healthcare contact centers are facing. Uh, and then we'll kind of fold those into some proof points in the form of a couple customer stories where we can show you know, real world examples of how. Uh, each of our organizations helped a customer overcome these specific challenges, uh, and we'll take a look at the results that came about from addressing those challenges. We'll uh, answer any questions you might have at the end. You can use the uh, questions tab in the GoToMeeting toolbar to ask a question at any time. And then at the end of the presentation, Rachel and I will see if between the two of us, we can't uh, get some answers to those for you. Okay, so just a little bit about Parlance Corporation. Uh, Parlance has been around for about two decades now. Uh, we focus solely on uh, great caller experiences uh, via automated call handling solutions. Uh, we've been a leading developer in the enterprise call handling solution space since 1996. We partner with our customers to take responsibility for getting callers where they need to go uh, quickly and easily. And this philosophy has led to a continuous pursuit of a better caller experience, one that doesn't involve instructions, menus, buttons, or other frustrating and obnoxious call handling obstacles. Uh, and you know, to date, we have achieved an 81% average self-service rate across all of our healthcare customers. So I'm pretty proud of that metric. Rachel, why don't you give us a quick introduction to StarTel for anyone on the line that may be unfamiliar with your organization? Sure. So StarTel is a leading developer of contact center solutions. Uh, we've been around for 36 years, and we got our start by providing call center technology to telephone answering services, and have since expanded our offerings to a variety of industries, including healthcare. Uh, we understand the consolidation and integration challenges facing hospitals today, as well as the ever-changing regulatory demands, and we are pleased to offer the marketplace with a software solution that has the power and the flexibility to help hospitals and healthcare systems overcome these challenges, all from a single unified contact center platform. Okay, terrific. Okay, uh, let's see, I'm just gonna jump into the challenges here, feet first. So challenge number one, Rachel, I'll take this one. Uh, to automate or not to automate, that is the question. So if, we start by just taking a look at the, the most frequently used contact center interface channels uh, as far as inbound uh, contact center channels go. The telephone just continues to dominate uh, inbound channels regardless of all the discussions around omni-channel, uh, multi-channel communications in the contact center. And it's still not even close, although uh, the dominance of, tele of telephony has perhaps slowly been eroding over the last several years as some of these other channels uh, tick up a percent or two each year. But still, the telephone reigns supreme. Uh, it's, and it's just because of human nature. It is the most immediate channel. Uh, it's personal, and it's ubiquitous. And if we take that 78% of inbound interactions coming via the phone, uh, and we look at how they break down uh, in healthcare, we see that about uh, Fifteen percent of those interactions are occurring via uh, uh, automation, some sort of self-service uh, function, 
well, 85% are uh, live agent handled. Uh, and that's that automation rate is actually far below what you generally see at a PBX, but uh, where it's more up in the 50, 60% range of being automated. Uh, but it continues to rise year over year, steadily increasing a few percentage points over the last several years. I believe 2013, that statistic was at uh, 10%. So contact centers are embracing automation usage, and there's a number of reasons why. The applications for automation within the con center, contact center are, are uh, numerous and pretty powerful. So everything from account lookup to conducting transactional self-service, you know, scheduling assistance, call triage, determining what the caller's intent is, and then making sure they're guided over uh, to the right area. Call steering, if you have agents within your contact center with different uh, specializations or knowledge sets, making sure that the caller gets to the most appropriate agent to help them with their, with their concern or with their need. Now, with all the benefits associated with automation, it's still going to be kind of a personal decision from contact center to contact center. And really what I would caution everyone to do uh, is weigh the value. So there's great potential for improvement and success with automation, but there's also significant risks to your brand and your bottom line. For every plus, there's an equal number of minuses involved. And also be aware that not all solutions and vendors are created equal. So be careful of what you choose to put in front of your patients. You know, some of the, pro, the pros for adding automation to the healthcare contact center, very cost effective. The cost per call is a fraction of, uh, of an agent call. Reduces your staffing and training needs. 24-7, 365 call handling. Uh, you're always getting that consistent ring and greeting across the enterprise. Uh, reducing, eliminating hold times getting a consistent voice of the enterprise if you have a centralized contact center or even if you have disparate contact centers, your patients can get the same experience uh, consistency throughout using automation. And it can be an experience enhancer. I'm not waiting on hold. Uh, I'm immediately greeted. I have the option of you know, self-servicing or I'm able to get over to an agent. Uh, but then the flip side, there are some cons. It's not suitable for every caller. You know, you're basically not going to have any automation tool available to you that's going to be the appropriate avenue for every caller. So you have to be aware of that. It's Some of them can be time consuming depending on the interaction method they use. You can frustrate and alienate callers, which then causes adverse brand impact. They require significant design expertise when you're implementing them. Uh, there's really no such thing as a successful off-the-shelf automated solution for a contact center. Uh, you're really going to want to look for a partner to help you to help understand your callers, uh, the caller behavior, the needs of your contact center, and all the different other criteria that'll need to be evaluated and judged in order to create a successful solution. They do require ongoing management, and this is day-to-day -day management in a number of components associated with the uh, automated solution. And they can be an experience dissatisfier if you're Taking, if you're taking a lot of time, making them endure menus and instructions and options, uh, you're really delivering a poor caller experience and that won't be lost upon your, your patients calling in. So that brings us into challenge number two. How do you keep agents focused on their core role? So your agents are valuable, highly trained assets for your organization. Uh, the gut reaction here would be to, as far as reducing call load goes, add automation is going is going to help reduce the call load going to your to your agents, which is going to allow them then to focus on those callers who really need their assistance. Yet, you have to be careful because not all automation is going to be effective in doing that. Although most automation will be effective in perhaps eliminating some calls from reaching agents, some types of automation will do so at the expense of the caller experience. And to understand this, we're just gonna to have to start here at the beginning. So more than 100 years, the only method of call handling was live answer. And then, you know, as, as technology began to advance, 
we began seeing some new different call handling interaction methods emerge. The first being, you know, around the 1980 uh, time frame, DTMF directed dialogue. This is the interaction method we all know and hate. Please listen carefully, our options have changed. Press one to reach sales, press two to reach blah, 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 to reach medical records, plus three to schedule an appointment, whatever it might be. And then several years later, you have speech directed dialogue come, come about. And this is an improvement. Uh, callers no, need, no longer need to enter buttons uh, and perhaps endure as long menus, but you still need to give them the instructions and you have to uh, guide them in the, the way to exactly request what they're looking for because the speech recognition system is only able mm -hmm. to analyze and spot certain terms. Now, within the last few years, we have the emergence of speech with natural language, which is basically the natural and intuitive interaction method callers are used to, very much like a live operator experience. The system's just going to let me say what I want, and then it's going to analyze what I've said immediately, instantly and make a decision as to what my intent is. A very simple and comfortable uh, experience there. However, if we look at, this is a study that Parlance did uh, last year where we looked at how healthcare facilities are connecting calls. As you can see, the most preferred interaction method is still DTMF directed dialogue. Uh, nearly two thirds of, of healthcare facilities using automation use the push button uh, menu driven option list interaction method. You know, only about 40% are using speech directed dialogue which again will still have to give you some instructions on what you can and can't say, but allows you to at least say your request instead of having to type it in. And I believe it's less than 3% are using the latest technology, speech natural language. And again, you see the dates and the errors that this technology comes from. So that right there is a, a bit of a red flag that maybe healthcare facilities need to be rethinking the interaction method they're using with callers. And the reason being, and the reason being is this study here. This comes from our friends at Interactions uh, in a recent study they did towards the end of uh, December of last year. <coughs> Excuse me. More than a third of IVR users deem them difficult to use. And less than, or, or right around 10% say that they were satisfied with their service. And really what it comes down to is wait time. So the longer you make someone uh, wait to be connected to the right resource or information, the more likely that they're going to take some undesirable action. <coughs> so after about eight to 10 seconds, you see the rate of operator requests begins to accelerate dramatically. Callers begin saying, what's the quickest way out? I just need a human. No, I don't have time for this. They may, be, they may even hang up. And what this entails and causes is those automation opt-outs. Sometimes people don't even listen to the whole option menu that you've been given. So they'll just take the first way out to reach so-and-so, press one. They're just gonna press one. Now they've perhaps gone to the wrong agent pool and the wrong resource desk. So now that agent needs to understand their need and then take the time to transfer them to the appropriate service desk. And then the caller is gonna need to repeat their request. And similarly, you may start getting PBX type calls into the contact center. So now your agents are spending time diffusing frustrated callers. Excuse me. And really, if you look at the, the difference, even between speech-directed dialogue and speech with natural language, we're not even talking about push button at this point. You see some of the difference that happens when you, when you switch from speech-directed dialogue to speech with natural language. More than a quarter of callers would request operators immediately when encountering speech-directed dialogue, 
if you switch to speech with natural language, you know, parlance customers see that drop significantly to less than 10% to more down to standard expectation levels. So really the caller experience, the patient experience in the healthcare contact center, when it comes to automation is dictated by the time it takes the caller to interact with the solution and get to the information or the resource they want. That dictates their engagement. That dictates the success of the solution. That dictates how much you're going to reduce the call load to your agents. So now that brings us into the second part of keeping agents focused on their core role, and that's improving agent productivity. So now let me turn things over to Rachel. Uh, Rachel, maybe you can walk us through uh, the StarTel point of view on addressing the technology challenges associated with improving agent productivity. Absolutely. So improving agent productivity, as we all know, is the main objective for contact centers. And once a call is routed from a speech natural technology to a live agent resource, they have a variety of activities to perform at that, at that moment, like greeting the caller, confirming caller or account information, dispatching calls, and that's where the challenge of keeping agents focused on their core role comes into play. You want to provide them with the resources they need to quickly service the caller while providing a positive customer experience as well. But sometimes that is difficult, especially when there's several different programs or screens or external knowledge bases that an agent would need to access in order to resolve the, call, the caller's inquiry. Since a live agent is the most expensive part of the caller experience and can typically run between 60 to 80 percent of operational budgets for healthcare, it is essential that the agent desktop contains the tools that the agents need to be efficient, productive, and provide the caller with a satisfying caller experience. And one way to achieve this is with agent desktop optimization or ADO. Uh, Aberdeen Group, they're a, an analyst group. They performed a recent study on ADO, and they define it as technology-driven organizational effort aimed to provide agents with a better ability to use their desktop in order to access information needed to serve customers in a timely and personalized fashion. And this struck a lot of resonance um, with just going back to having an automated um, agent desktop that's going to really improve productivity. And in that study, Aberdeen surveyed 141 organizations with ADO initiatives, and they found that companies with agent desktop or optimization initiatives can improve the use of agents' desktop just by making a few changes, such as by making caller data more accessible, um, by allowing agents to provide more personalized service. And typically, customers who invest in ADO optimization tend to experience higher productivity, less frustrated clients, and increases in efficiency. In this slide you're looking at, um, so the study also revealed on average that agents spend 15% of their time looking for relevant data, such as previous caller history, maybe a knowledge base of articles. Um, that's, that's a lot of time, you know, that's wasted time and money um, as a result of unproductive work. Meanwhile, the caller is still on the line, so that's going to result in a higher than desired call handling time. It's no secret that the customer experience is directly influenced by agent activities. And the Aberdeen study revealed that organizations, the 40, or excuse me, the organizations with a formal ADO program benefit from investments in a number of ways compared to organizations without. For instance, they experience a 44% improvement in customer retention. So happy customers, higher retention. The study also found a 70% improvement in positive word of mouth year over year. And that was measured by the number of positive mentions on social media channels. They also saw a 55% improvement in average handle time, which makes sense uh, as agent desktop optimization is going to keep agents more confined to a single program um, versus, you know, several programs and more screens. And the study also showed that the investment in agent desktop optimization programs increased 62% between 2014 and 2015. So having seen its impact in improving productivity, driving customer satisfaction, 
it is expected that more companies are planning to invest um, in this area this year and beyond. So Mark, with that, I'll toss it back to you for the, the third challenge. Sure. Actually, uh, I think this one is still up in you, uh, up your alley, Rachel, uh, discussing oh, yeah, analytics visibility yeah. and the need for specifically timely analytics visibility. Yeah, thank you. So our third technology challenge is, is the lack of real-time analytics visibility within the call center environment. And in a different study by Aberdeen Group, it was discovered that 60% of companies believe having a dashboard to view in a contact center excuse me, to view contact center activity results is the best practice, and I wasn't surprised by this. Um, in fact, prior to the study, I assumed that most contactors, contact centers had at least two different dashboard views within their center, you know, one for agents showing the real-time metrics related to um, queue wait, longest wait time, average abandonment, uh, status, as we meet other agents, um, and then one for managers as well to display service levels, number of calls in queue, um, longest wait time, et cetera. So what surprised me is the same study found that 40% of contact centers have no data analysis tools, including reports and dashboards. I, I thought that was startling. How do you measure your agent success, your contact center success, your organization success? On top of that, analytics has been touted as a top factor to change shape of the industry in five years. So when it comes to real-time reporting or KPIs, key performance indicators, um, if your call center falls into that 60% that are not currently using data analysis tools, here's a list of some of the key um, or the top KPIs that are worth tracking. As you can see, most of them are related to productivity metrics. Uh, typically, with real-time reporting applications, they concentrate on KPIs where immediate intervention can out alter the outcome. So the real-time stats are typically updated in intervals of 15 seconds or less, and they enable contact center managers and supervisors to monitor and evaluate agent and team activity and performance as it's happening. So this will allow for quick adjustments to be made which can have an immediate impact on your results. So for instance, if abandoned call rate is high, you can, uh, a manager could quickly adjust the staffing levels on the fly to make more agents available and hopefully in turn reduce the time that callers are having to wait before being connected to an agent. So by combining these real-time KPIs and having them in your call center, it can give you greater in insight into the performance of your overall center as well as individual agent performance. And it's really gonna be more um, enabling you to take real-time action. And here are some of the primary benefits uh, of real-time analytics to be realized beyond the contact center to the entire enterprise and all its departments. So as you can see, the primary benefit here of 81% uh, is reducing the manual effort involved in collecting, analyzing, and performance management data. And I think a lot of you can probably um, agree with that. It's a stringent process, so by automating it, it's going to take a lot of um, or streamline um, uh, efficiencies and um, reduce your time involved. And with reporting and analytics, you can also uncover additional insights. You can drill down further to uncover other ways to enhance your call center's performance. For instance, if you have high average talk time and wrap time and multiple calls um, transferred, that may signify that some additional agent training or one-on-one -on -one coaching is needed. Um, you know, no call center is perfect, especially when it comes to forecasting and scheduling. So by using real-time data like call volume, wait time, abandoned calls, that can assist with your scheduling and forecasting of agents. Uh, if you need to ramp up your staff or ramp down, um, you can easily do that and prepare for maybe an upcoming marketing campaign. You can look at past historical data to help you um, schedule for the holidays. And the managers can also use the reports for quality assurance. So if you see the same maybe phone number coming in um, multiple times in one day over the course of a few days, consider digging deeper to determine why the caller called back multiple times and if his or her inquiry was ever resolved. And later in this presentation, we will show you an example of how 
real-time analytics to deliver accountability and reduce wait time within a hospital. Okay, great. Back to you now. Well, yeah, well, challenge number four, I'll, I'll get this one started, Rachel, and then pass it back to you because I think we, we, we each have a few points to make here. Uh, challenge number four, how do you achieve maximum value with your technology? And really what this comes down to is service and support. Uh, you know, how are your vendors allowing you to be successful with your technology solutions or are they designed to allow you to be successful with them? Uh, and let's take a closer look at this. So who's responsible? This is, should be, you know, a primary question on your mind. Is your technology gonna, going to uh, come with a put in a ticket mentality? You know, let me uh, submit a trouble ticket here for this issue I'm having and, and see how long it takes me to get, for them to get back to me if they do. Uh, you know, bundled capabilities not being up to par. Oh yeah, we do that as well. Okay, well, you're, if you're a jack of all trades, you're, you're really a master of none. So, I mean, is this something the company specializes in or do they just kind of dabble in it so that they can say that they have it? The other thing to consider in healthcare, IT resources are slammed. Uh, everything from uh, implications from the Affordable Care Act, EHR management, uh, security, HIPAA compliance, uh, you name it, IT is being pulled in many different directions. They are busy, busy, busy. Uh, most likely this new technology application for the contact center uh, the prioritization of that will probably fall below some of those other projects and especially especially clinical IT. Are there hidden charges? You know, if I do need someone to do something here associated with the either the call automation technology, uh, the agent productivity technology, who's paying for that? Is that included? Do I have to pay every time I, I ask for them to do something? Uh, what's what are the ramifications there? Also, what's the what are the ramifications for the technology as a whole? What's the impact potential? What are the implications for my patients? What can they expect? What can we expect to get out of this? Is this technology and more specifically the technology vendor going to be able to provide a clear understanding of here's what this can and cannot do, and you know here's here's what we anticipate for the results of this within X amount of time of implementation. And here's another fact that, you know, 40% of contact centers say that IT doesn't meet their current needs. Uh, you know, in healthcare, I, I think, and this is actually across all contact centers, and I think in healthcare, it might actually be higher just because as I mentioned, uh, IT is, is slammed. They are continuously being pulled in multiple directions and they have more, more workload than they do time and resources. Uh, I'm sure they'd love to be able to help you out with your new technology project, but you know what, it's gonna be several months before they can get to that because they have X, Y, and Z that are, that are lined up before you. So get in line. So let's present, uh, Rachel and I each have a few best practices to kind of wrap up the uh, challenges part of the presentation here. I'll present a few best practices on call automation. Basically, for call automation to be successful, one of the most vital things is understanding caller behavior. Is the vendor you work with a specialist in caller behavior? Are they gonna work to understand who your different caller communities coming into the contact center are? What are their expectations? What's their intent? Is the technology adaptable to meet evolving caller needs? And I don't mean evolving caller needs over time. I, I, it might even be evolving caller needs on that call. Is the technology going to be flexible and intelligent enough to recognize when callers are having a problem with the solution or uh, being able to recognize intent when it is not explicitly stated? Uh, these are things that you want to consider. How is the technology going to be able to adapt to my callers. Directory management, who's in charge of maintaining that vital directory that associates numbers with names, resources, uh, agent pools, whatever it might be. 
who's in charge of managing that? Is there someone uh, monitoring that? Or is, is there someone in there making changes? Is it going to cost you to make changes? Is it extra for them to manage that for you? Something else to consider. One of the most crucial components of the automation solution. Another best practice, continuous tuning. The grammars, the pronunciations, the interaction dialogues used with the callers, again, the directory, all these items need day-to-day -day attention from someone. Is that going to cost you extra? Do they even offer it? A few things to think about. Now, Rachel, I'll pass it back over to you. Thanks, Mark. So for agent productivity to be successful, you need to have a vendor that understands your agent especially their behaviors, their needs. So setting your agents up for success is critical by understanding um, what it is like to be an agent, how it is to take a call, um, how to streamline that process um, is an important uh, component to how we develop our solution. You know, the agent interface, having that laid out on the screen to make sense with the call flow perspective and enabling the agents to be able to save the agent desktop in a particular format um, being able to um, empower agents in that way is, is critical to their success. And as we all know, the healthcare environment is always adapting. So ensuring that your vendor is able to provide flexible technology to meet your hospital's changing needs and requirements um, as regulations change, is your vendor willing to um, go under um, HIPAA validation? Are they willing to make adjustments to their technology to make sure that um, they're under that scope? So asking your vendor those questions are important, as well as uh, quality monitoring, um, using some of the, the voice recording scorecards, reports to enhance the customer experience, as well as the agent performance is, is key here um, with agent productivity. Great. Thanks, Rachel. Um, so now let's get into some of the exciting uh, sections. Not that that wasn't... Uh, completely exciting for all of us. <laughs> uh, proof points. So Rachel and I are each going to pick a customer here uh, and show you how for each of our technologies we we worked with the customer to overcome those common technology challenges in order to implement a successful solution. So Parlance recently worked with a large uh, health network in the southwestern United States. Actually, we'll be having this detailed case study coming out here in the next uh, few weeks. Uh, I believe they have 11 uh, different medical uh, facilities, centralized PBX and scheduling center, about 140 operators and scheduling agents in that center. And they, they faced a number of challenges. This health network is growing rapidly. The call volumes uh, are growing in lockstep. With that growth, uh, their call queues were just really get it, beginning to get out of hand. They had difficulties hiring and staffing to meet the demand, uh, which resulted in a lot of stressed operators and agents uh, and high turnover rates, which just kind of this vicious circle. They had long hold times as long as 40 minutes uh, in the scheduling center. And on their monthly surveys, the average patient complaints concerning call handling were as high as 70 different complaints. Parlance partnered with this health network, and we really set out to do five things. Basically use the latest call handling technology to help steer their callers to the right agent, the right resource, begin to reduce the need uh, for those agent-to-agent -agent transfers, uh, eliminate the PBX type calls coming to the agents, you know, get those over to the operators or get them to the destination that they're looking to get to via self-service. Uh, offer, And we do this by offering them a very natural and intuitive experience, which increases engagement. If you make it as easy as talking to a live operator, people will use it. Uh, we really focused solely on caller success. Uh, you know, what can we do for these callers? And then the real key to success for these, these solutions is listen, assess, tune, improve, and repeat. And not only are we listening to the customer, what they're trying to do, what are some of the roadblocks, but we're going to listen to their callers. We actually listen to the calls. You know, what is this caller trying to do? Uh, how can we be more efficient in getting them to that information or that resource they need to get to? 
uh, then assessing the solution. How can we tune that, uh, tweak it to, you know, next time get that caller uh, to where they need to go even faster, it, improve the experience for the caller, and repeat. This is an ongoing process. This, this isn't just when we go to implement the solution. Uh, this is for the life of the business relationship. And it's actually for that reason that uh, pilots applications uh, tend to improve in performance over time rather than erode as most other call automation does. And then we're also working with the customer to recommend additional areas for caller experience improvement. Are there other roadblocks to the caller experience that might be not as obvious as the PBX and the scheduling center? Are there departmental applications we can help them with? So that's an ongoing discussions with this customer to uh, see where else we can help them out with. So what's the result? Well, oh, I think we we missed a missing a slide here. Oh, I'm sorry, we're we're missing a slide here. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how that happened, Rachel. We'll figure that out. Uh, but let me summarize for you. Basically, calls to the operators and agents cut in half. Uh, from 100,000 PBX calls a month down to 50,000 now wind up with their PBX operators. And it was, I believe, 44,000 calls a month to the scheduling agents has now been reduced to 22,000. So the stress has really been taken off those agents uh, accordingly. Turnover has gone way down. They've eliminated the need to hire three more operators. Uh, the the high longest wait time has gone from 40 minutes down to one minute, and the average monthly complaints uh, went from 70 to two. And perhaps the greatest uh, validation of the success on this came from our main contact at this centralized contact center, who said two weeks after going live with Parlance. I walked into a senior executive meeting, and before I could say anything, they were applauding. So that really spoke, you know, pretty powerful statement for the validation of our solution. All right, so Rachel, let's let's go into uh, into the Valley Hospital. What did Startel do in the Valley Hospital? Thanks, Frank. Yeah, so the Valley Hospital is a 451 bed acute care not-for-profit located in New Jersey. Uh, they currently serve more than 440, excuse me, 440, 100,000 people in 32 towns and adjoining communities. Um, and there were other departments of the hospital, including telecom, that had been using StarTel's main number answering uh, page operator and patient information solutions for almost 20 years. But with this particular um, challenge, it was the, the hospital's patient financial services department that was looking for assistance. So they're responsible for processing all the bills of hospital stays and services, and they were faced with the challenge of having basically no system uh, or processes in place to monitor and track the performance of its contact center. So as a result, there was no way to hold the department's financial analysts um, accountable, and those analysts were the ones that support the Valley Hospital patients and physicians and staff. At the same time, uh, the department was also experiencing higher than normal call volume and long wait times of up to 10 minutes. And you know, those long wait times were impacting patient satisfaction scores, which at the time were less than 60%. So the solution that we offered to the Valley Hospital, we, um, we implemented StarTel's Contact Management Center to better manage their queuing and routing, scripting and dispatching of calls, faxes, and emails. We also installed, installed the StarTel dashboard, and that's what monitors the queues and the service levels and provides the real-time statistics. Um, and using the dashboard, um, the, the plan was to use that data to reduce the wait times, which of course is gonna have a direct impact on improving patient satisfaction. So during implementation, the StarTel CMC and dashboard were also integrated with the department's existing advice switch for ensuring synchronized data and reporting. So since implementation, the results have been significant across the board. Wait times reduced from 10 minutes to less than five, so 50% reduction just by using the StarTel dashboard. 
um, the call data reports to help us forecast you both the staffing levels and their precise impact on wait time. Patient satisfaction improved by 23% from 60 to 83%. So after implementation, they were receiving approximately 5,500 calls a month with an average patient satisfaction ranking of 83%. And this improvement on patient satisfaction not only had a positive impact on the Valley Hospital's bottom line, but on employee satisfaction as well. They were more happy because their customers were happy. Makes and sense. then we were also, yeah, we were also able to help them implement a quality assurance program. So using the call stats, which is like ignored, rejected, abandoned calls, as well as individual performance. Um, management was able to hold employees accountable, and using that data, they implemented annual performance evaluation. So now analysts have the opportunity to receive annual monetary increases based on their own individual performance. So win-win for everybody, win-win for patients and wait times and for employees. Great. And let me see, I just, I found our missing slide here, so the results from uh, <laughs> from our customer there in the in the southwestern U.S., some fairly, some fairly dramatic results. Uh, so basically, that wraps up our presentation portion of uh, of today's uh, today's broadcast. Uh, and now we'll open it up to uh, any questions. So let me figure out if I can. Uh, let's see where I can find. Uh, the toolbar here to pull up some questions and okay and I need to scroll so I can actually see them okay how long have Startel and Parlance been working together I think we can answer that Rachel yeah well uh, we've we've basically been coming things. across each other for for years uh, mm-hmm and you know, from the parlance perspective, uh, we basically announced our uh, strategic partnership uh, last fall um, in early winter. And you know, from the parlance perspective, what we kept hearing from some of our joint customers was how much they valued Startel from the service and support aspect. And that's really something that parlance um, has always taken pride in offering a very robust service and support infrastructure. So it made us kind of sit up and take notice and, and say, really, well, you know, we, we, we should really get to know these StarTel people. They, they sound like-minded to us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think it was last May that we installed the Parlance's operator system at our office in Irvine. So when customers call in, they will actually um, be greeted by the Parlance operator system and then routed to the appropriate individual or department um, and from that, I mean, I, I think for us, we've realized implementation was so quick and seamless, and it, it quickly just became apparent to us that our healthcare users really benefit from, from this type of service within their hospital, especially in the main number answering department. That's great. That's great. Okay, let's see. Are each of these solutions on-premise or hosted? Rachel, you want to take a, your first swing at that? Yeah. Yeah, our solutions are actually offered both on-premise as well as hosted. So mm -hmm. um, organizations have the choice of, of choosing mm -hmm. which solution works best for them in their environment. With a hosted solution, Startel um, manages all of the IT uh, for it, so everything from implementation to ongoing support. Uh, with premise solutions, um, that's typically the call center or, or contact center's uh, responsibility, but of course with our software churns, we we do the um, the ongoing um, software assurance maintenance update. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. In Parlance, uh, we provide either on-premises solutions, or we can uh, deploy uh, our operator assistance solutions via uh, virtual deployment into your VM environment. Um, in either instance, um, Parlance does uh, manage all the complete aspects of all the solutions, hardware, software, updates, uh, you know, even, uh, you know, server replacements when needed uh, and so forth. So we take, we take full ownership of um, all aspects of the solutions. Okay. 
can the parlance offering be bundled into a StarTel implementation as part of the overall StarTel upgrade and or installation for budgeting purposes? All right, I'm not sure I understand the budgeting purposes uh, aspect of that, but uh, the short answer is yes. Um, yeah. You know, in a, in a later webinar, stay tuned for uh, some future webinars from Parlance and StarTel. Um, we'll kind of walk through the implementation into integration footprint on that, and we'll give you a better idea of that. What's the implementation okay. uh, of these solutions look like? Infrastructure, time frame, etc. Well, as I just said, we'll you know stay tuned for a closer look at that. Um, I think we just covered a little bit of the deployment um, as far as how it's deployed, as far as interconnections with uh, the infrastructure, you know, Parlance, uh, our, our solutions integrate with just about any um, type of contact center environment or uh, PBX solution, um, typically via SIP. Uh, and the time frame is basically dependent on each different solution. So, you know, as I covered in the presentation, we don't provide off the shelf solutions. These are, are custom built unique to each customer because really no two caller communities at any two organizations are exactly the same. So we really need to dig deep and understand your callers first uh, and then create the applications uh, th that will uh, be most suitable for them. But you know, typically you're talking weeks to a month, um, depending on on a few different things, the data sources we need to integrate with to build that robust directory and, and update it nightly, and a few of the other things. So, you know, that's about the general ballpark of things. Rachel? Yeah, um, the start to implementation, um, gosh. I think Margaret and John are probably on, on the line. They can probably best answer it. Um, I, I believe it's three to five days for on-site implementation. Um, for a hosted solution implementation, um, it's typically done over the phone um, with remote desktop into uh, the client site. Um, but we also offer integration with any third-party um, technology. Um, for the most part, we have open APIs, and, and we are open just like working with Parlance um, in this technology partnership with other technology vendors. Um, if a, you know, it's going to better our customers, and we want to provide them with whatever um, additional technology uh, they could use. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, here's a, oh, this is an interesting one. What will the next big <laughs> technological leap for call handling be? What about agent productivity? Okay, so I guess I'll take a, a first swing at the, uh, the next big technological leap is really gonna be virtual call assistance. So, you know, leveraging the new natural language capabilities in an even more robust fashion, uh, you know, combining that with these, these highly intelligent um, call handling solutions that not only are recognizing words, but perhaps recognizing inflection, um, you know, almost psych, uh, psychological aspects of the, the spoken voice and making real-time decisions on appropriate actions uh, in, in that regard. So I think that's the next big technological leap for call handling is, you're not even going to know you're not talking to a human. Uh, there's the technology is beginning to come to that point where it's it's almost seamless. And if they if if we can overcome some of the uh, you know that that psychological analysis component that humans you know live agent operators bring to the table uh, and combine that with the new natural language understanding capabilities, uh, it's it's going to be some, it's going to make for some incredible, incredible applications. Rachel, what do you think for agent productivity? What's your, uh, what do you think is coming down the pike? Well, I can tell you what we're working on. Yeah. We're working on an enhanced agent desktop interface, which 
we are very excited to reveal the um, latest look and feel at our users conference in a few weeks. Mm -hmm. So um, this agent desktop will be um, more user friendly. Um, it's going to include just many more free features that will benefit the agent with abilities to lock screens in place, drag and drop, um, have multiple screens on two different, uh, or sorry, one screen on two different monitors. Um, it's really going to be able to just provide them um, with all of the information they need at their fingertips or with just a, a few keystrokes. And it will also be um, keystroke as well as um, mouse-driven um, capabilities. Okay, sounds exciting. So we'll yeah. keep an eye out for that in a few weeks. Uh, well, that is all the questions we have for today. We wrapped up about five minutes past our allotted time, so I think we did pretty good. Rachel, thank you so much for uh, helping us out today and in, in, um, you know, providing some perspective from StarTel's point of view. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, I enjoyed that. That was, that was good. Uh, everyone, yeah. have a great afternoon. Uh, on behalf of Parlance and Startel, we thank you for attending and uh, look forward to speaking with you soon. Take care now. Bye-bye.